Hey guys, welcome back to Time Bomb Channel, of course, with myself, a Bombardier. And yes, I think that Citizen have gone and done it again with this uh, recent re release. Um, although I'm stuck a little bit on a nickname, need your help. I've got two options, the Kraken um, or the Bolo, uh, for reasons that will become apparent. As uh, regulars to the channel will know, I'm a massive fan of the uh, ProMaster range. Um, but I honestly think they've actually gone and done something a, a, a little bit uh, special here. I'm going to go as far out on a limb as to say maybe this is the new Zilla uh, that many of us have been waiting for. Uh, first apologies though is that uh, it's not a true true unboxing as when this arrived the other day I couldn't wait uh, to do the video <laughs> unboxing and dove straight in um, and uh, yeah already uh, had a day, day's experience with, uh, with the watch and here it is uh, in all of its uh, angular uh, perfection, the Citizen NB 6004-83E. And as you can see, it is angular from every angle, uh, hence the reference to the Kraken, um, an equally angular legend. As you can see, that chiseled jaw here matched, matched I think, by the side profile, absolutely, of this uh, dive beast. All right, enough of my ramblings. Let's just take it off the uh, comfy cushion. Uh, get rid of it. Clear the table up a little um, and crack on with some uh, some specs, some specs even. All right, so important specs on this one because as you'll see as it's come out of the box there, it is quite a lump. It, we are looking at, get rid of the uh, reflection, so we're looking at 46 uh, mils across and then out to 50, uh, including that screw down crown. Top to bottom, lug to lug is also then uh, 50 mils. It's 15 mils worth of depth. The lugs are an odd one. Uh, they are 23 and a half um, up here, which is going to present some interesting challenges for strap changes. However, that does narrow down then to 20 mils at the clasp. Obviously, this is ISO 6425 certified. Uh, you then have sapphire glass up top, obviously with uh, you know a, a, a healthy dollop of AR coating. But just before you all switch off now and go, wow, you know, that's way too, way too big and, and, and hammer it for that. You need to bear in mind that this is uh, super titanium. So I've sized it up to my uh, seven and a quarter inch uh, wrist. Let's just uh, wake the scales up and um, where are the links gone? So I've taken out uh, three links here. So I'm going to wake the scales up. Come on. This is important. Um, zero that. And this watch, uh, sized up for that seven and a quarter, is weighs 100. If you can see that properly, 138, uh, 138 grams. 138 grams only for something of that size. So it is incredibly deceptive, and I think that's that makes it incredibly um, uh, wearable as a consequence. Let's just put put things into perspective. We can't see the uh, scales there, can we? Here we can. Um, so the uh, the uh, G-Shock, the GWG 1000, uh, weighs uh, 117. The Helm uh, Kuraburi comes in at a healthy 205 grams. What else have we got here? And then the uh, MM200 comes in at 171. So again, just to remind everyone, the uh, the bolo <laughs> here uh, is in at 138. So as you can say, it's actually closest in weight-wise to the uh, the Mudmaster here. So as I say, incredibly wearable as a consequence. Let me just throw it on wrist so that you can see actually uh, what that translates to in real life. We'll, crack, we'll continue with the rest of the specs in the moment, but as I say, I just really, you know, the, the initial photos on Instagram, everybody was going, Oh my God, it's a beast, it's a chunk, it's way too big, blah, blah, blah. But as you can see here, I think that sits, okay, those, those lugs at 50 here on my seven and a quarter inch wrist, I think are absolutely ideal. Um, there's no top wobble um, off this at all. Um, it's because of that that weight, um, it, it, it just doesn't shift around. I've had it on for uh, all day yesterday and today. Um, and incredibly, is this a deceptively light? Um, that's the thing that I just, I just can't get over. If you, if, you, if you consider, as I say, just those uh, top specs there, you, you, you might sort of uh, 
you know, automatically say no to this. Um, but I think you need to look much deeper and beyond that, um, because as I say here, um, it, it's deceptively light. It's kind of spooky, actually. <laughs> All right, um, let's crack on uh, where we were with some of the specs. So as I mentioned before, so it is super titanium. Um, and it's treated then with citizens' own hardening technology, which is called uh, Duratec. Um, and as most of you know, then this uh, is going to make this uh, five times stronger and 40% lighter than steel. In addition to that, uh, this titanium isn't going to react to salt water uh, in the same way as steel. So again, making it incredibly useful tooly um, if you are going to be diving with it. Um, but as I say, for me, that 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 the weight on it it's quite weird um it, it, as i say i had it on to this this morning as i was wandering around and it's sort of like your brain doesn't doesn't work with it your brain is sort of thinking you know that doesn't weigh enough for for you know for its size <laughs> it's, it's it plays a little bit of a mind game but anyway back to the detail um so the bezel um you've almost got like a crinkle cut um I don't know, is it like corrugated uh, surface onto that? It's a 60 clicker, which means it's not a refined sound, but it's not as industrial as the, uh, the Ecozilla. And it makes the Pingo sound positively basic, but here's a quick listen. Yeah, positive. Really, really, really positive. And of course, uh, being a citizen, it lines up perfectly. Uh, there's there's an element of back play when it's well when it's be slightly between but it just nestles back into that original lock so no I'm not going to say that there is any misalign um, any any back play in that um, you do then have a covered um, or slightly shielded uh, nipple pip up here as well let me get back that up to the twelve um, otherwise the OCDs amongst you are going to be getting upset. Um, Thinking then, um, as well as I say on those bezels, then you've got those uh, additional screws for those uh, those five minute markers um, onto the dial, uh, which is really quite quite an impressive piece. Um, looking at it, it kind of reminded me a little bit of the uh, Citizen Orca. If you're not familiar with that model, let me just pop up an image here. And then also, I think uh, Citizen have clearly doffed their caps uh, to the Zillas um, as well with this uh, design. Those are, are applied hour markers. Um, and I'm going to say, I think that the, the one around the three around the date window, so I'm getting way too much reflection. The, 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 they put like these little winglets around the date window. I think that's a, a mistake. Personally, I think they could have done without that. The 12 o'clock marker obviously then has that additional orange splash. If you can just see it under the hand there. No, you can't. Let me move the hands out of the way. Um, obviously then you have those uh, very iconic uh, syringy like hands from Citizen. There we go, we can see that. Lovely pop of colour on the uh, the minute hand and the seconds hand accordingly. So there you can see under the 12, no you can't. Under the 12 you've got that uh, little splash of colour. Um, that date window, the window then as I say integrated in at the 3 o'clock. I'm not 100% convinced as I say by those winglets but anyway, let's let's move past that one. You then have a minute track on both the inner of the bezel and then also on the rehort. I think uh, you know that's probably to compensate for the depth of the dial, as you can see here. Uh, there's really quite a long way down to that. Uh, again, beautiful surface, like ripply surface that they've put on the on the watch here. Absolutely delicious. It really is very, 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 very pretty indeed. The loom colour uh, was a little bit of a surprise. As you can see here, it's not citizen blue, um, but what it is doing uh, is lighting up the room here. You can see as well that there's no uh, loom on the rest of the bezel, just up on that nipple pip here. Onto the side then, obviously you've got signed, uh, signed screw down crown here. It's not a massive crown um, in comparison to the rest of the, uh, the case body, but there's enough to certainly get your fingers on. One of the aspects that I really, really like about it is the is the shroud and how it hugs the body, but then allows you, you've, you've got ample, ample finger space here, either side uh, to, to, to get access to that bezel. And it's that it's that side profile that had me thinking of the Kraken's jawline. Um, <laughs> it just, it's just identical. It's so, so rugged, beautifully uh, angled. I mean, yeah, spot on, absolutely spot on. Because it's not, it's that super titanium again, it's not shiny again, which is another one of my bugbears. It's kind of got like this muted aspect. Um, I think there's, there's basically there's a combination of brushing and then maybe even here on the bracelet, maybe it's just, it might even be blasted. 
um, more of that, that muted grey. The case back, um, yeah, case backs for me are usually kind of important. I like I like looking at the designs on the back here, but here it's pretty utilitarian, uh, just sort of basic information. Um, so I'm going to try and get past that, and I'm going to get past it to focus on the aspect of the of, of the dish area here that's created um, underneath. You know, they, they, they curve beyond that, that case back, um, allowing that sort of, you know, real sort of cushion aspect as it, as it sits on wrist. Um, onto the uh, bracelet, sorry, the, the clasp down at the bottom here. Again, very, very solid. Uh, you've got your push uh, locker, pins on the side. And another lovely little bonus we have here is a uh, glide lock. It's not quite a... Um, it's not quite a Rolex uh, glide lock um, in that sense, but uh, yeah, very fit for purpose. And it's a push as opposed to, sorry, it's a push up as opposed to a push in uh, to, to activate it. But again, um, I was used it today, just sort of adds that little bit of extra on there when it's when it's hot outside and your wrists are, are swelling up. Another surprise on the inside is that this is the Citizen Myota 9051, which is a new movement and it is automatic. And um, I think that may niggle some people as the uh, Citizen Eco Drives are an incredibly popular aspect of their uh, Pro Master series. On the upside, this does have a 200 uh, Gauss anti-magnetic properties. That doesn't seem like a great deal if you compare it to the uh, 15,000 on our Omega, but I think it's probably enough for most of us in our daily lives. That movement will also then give you around 42 hours worth of power. Um, it is uh, hacking, quick set date, and got an accuracy to around uh, between uh, 10 to 20 seconds a day. All right, so can I find any faults with this? Well, as it only came in yesterday, I've not had that much time to really test it fully, but um, issue that I had when taking out those links, the pins in there are incredibly tight. I mean, it took me a long, 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 long time to push them through. Really, really, really solid. Um, that they're, you know, they've they've neglected to put any uh, <laughs> grease on them at all. Um, and the other thing that I'm thinking of, because of the the, the color palette that they've used here, um, it, it's it's very grey. Uh, you do have that orange pop on there, and without that orange pop, I think this thing would become almost illegible. Um, because yeah, the colors are really quite similar. Um, so I think, yeah, legibility. I mean, if you compare it, say, to something like the uh, the Kuraburi, I mean, here, yeah, the colorways, the, the palette, the definition and everything like that, super, super clear. You have no issues with it. But just sort of like looking at this as I was walking down the street, it's sort of, mm, you have to look a little bit closer, but I think I'm probably going to be able to get used to that. Another aspect that I picked up on um, is that there's quite a lot of space um, sort of nooks and crannies in here, I think, you know, that might be sort of a little bit dust magnets. Um, so it just needs cleaning up uh, accordingly. Again, for the purists, uh, because there are no uh, minute gradings on that bezel, uh, some may object to that. Um, but I think that's the trade-off uh, that you get for this absolute metallic feast. The price from the uh, ADs is quite high at the moment, but I picked this up on Grey Market already uh, from Spain, and I saved quite a lot of money. Um, so if you are interested, I would uh, you know, suggest uh, doing a lot of research. Um, and that last aspect, as I say, that, that neg aspect, is for me, it's just getting my brain used to that white weight size ratio. Again, I was looking at it and you sort of, you've got it on wrist, you kind of think, well, God, is it okay? Is it, has it slipped off or something? It's like a little bit odd. Um, if we're to compare this, I suppose, uh, to the others in the range, you know, at a similar price point, you know, with a similar sort of uh, design uh, ethos, we've got the, the new uh, G-Shock Frogmans, I'm a bit disappointed by them because they don't have dive attributes like the previous ones. Um, you've got some marathons, which are probably coming quite similar, but they do have QC issues and they're also predominantly quartz. The Victorian Ox Inox, I think, um, massively let down by the loom. You've then probably got the Seikos, you've got the Monsters and the Sumos, you know, great watches, but um, you know, the people are really getting put off by the alignment and the price. And then, of course, I suppose Helm, uh, you know, as an equivalent ISO certified dive watch, uh, way, way cheaper, but yeah, almost double the weight. What do I like about this, though, and, and why did I get it? Because when I saw it released, um, I just thought automatically that doesn't look like any of the other dive watches that I have. 
Um, it's really, really, really quite unique. And the spec package that it comes with, I think is punching well, well, well above its weight. It's not a saturation diver. I think those 200 meters worth of water resistance, um, you know, putting it in the standard dive category. Um, but on the other hand, it is bold. It is overbuilt, it is angular, it is robust, and it is not shy. Therefore, perhaps befitting of its purpose. And I think it's backed up by detailing, as I say, sort of on that bezel and on the, and on, on the dial surface there, which looks up close, absolute class. And I think the more and more I look at it, um, it's an absolute keeper. The one thing that I want to see is what it looks like at night um, in the dark and see how that legibility works. Um, they do come in other colours. There's a green one and a blue one, but they were not on sale here in Europe. But if you're patient, then they soon will be. It also come, there also is a rubber brother. Um, it's the 6408E. Um, and you can see there the need to go OEM on a, on a strap, swatch, uh, strap swap even. All right, guys. So um, is this the Bolo? You know, that big chunky muscular chap or is this the kraken because of those angles uh, let me know your thoughts down below and of course until next time this is your host bombardier signing off cheers guys mm -hmm.